Oh, okay. My, my mission will be the most um, easy or difficult one. Mission possible, yeah. I'll be talking about uh, True Father's Life Cause. And uh, I'll also be talking, talk, I'll be telling you about 92 years in uh, one hour. Is that possible? <laughs> okay, let's see. The father did it actually, so it will be possible. Anyhow, I also had some challenge about this. I was thinking what to do. So I quickly consulted uh, my sister here, Ninia, to know the heart of uh, Dr. Che. What does he think about this? And she said, there's no going back. You have to do it. And I also immediately consulted my friend, my elder brother, uh, Mr. Julian Gray. So I got some support from him. He gave me prayers and a lot of things. <laughs> and finally, I thought, let me consult one more important person. And that was my wife. I said, what do you think? She said, check your time. <laughs> so just like uh, Dr. Richardson got, I also got a similar information about time. So we're going to be working on time, seriously. And I hope I will be successful like my predecessors. How they became successful, history and high. I will try to make sure that I succeed like them, like uh, Mr. Arden and also Dr. Richardson. Basically, you know, to talk about True Father's Life course is something that none of us is qualified to talk about. And even to actually even to listen to it, to receive divine principle, none of us is totally qualified. But uh, by the special grace and the sacrifice and the love mm -hmm. of heaven, of our heavenly parents, of our true parents, we can all be here today. And in fact, it was based on that special grace that we are having this condition. So this is a condition. So you may not be able to get the whole uh, content as it is, but it's a condition that you remain uh, focused, attentive, and concentrate, and try to appreciate all the sacrifices that true father and true mother made to make us be here. So let us, from that point of view, uh, try to focus. I'll begin by talking about the birth of the Messiah. And I'm going to read from Chon song very quickly. It says that, Ever since the fall of the first human ancestors, Adam and Eve, God created, God wanted to complete the providence of restoration. He wanted to complete it through Jesus when he, when he sent him as Messiah. However, the people of Israel and the religion of Judaism failed to fulfill their responsibility to receive him. Hence, God again sent a savior to humankind. This time, among the Korean people, the true parents have come with this mission. Our true father sent Baiga to us. Now, the early life of our, of our father, Samuel Moon, In context, as you can see, it recalls to Korean history. True father's history is Korean history. In other words, there will be no Korea without true father. True, when you look at true father's history, there's no way you can talk about true father without talking about Korea. And there's no way you can talk about Korea without mentioning true father. I had one very quick experience in my country. You know, in 2012, true father passed away, and uh, we had to bring some VIPs to Korea. And uh, I quickly went to the Korean embassy to say, look, we have a very short time, and we need to get some VIPs down to, to Korea uh, from Nigeria. Please, can you help us? Uh, because the, 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 the staff at the Korean embassy was new. I don't know him. And I said, please, do you know Reverend Moon? He said, do I know Reverend Moon? Reverend Moon is one of the founders of Korea. That was his response. And I was really amazed. And I thought, wow, so you know that? So he said, no, we're going to do our best to make sure we, we get people there quickly. And then they actually supported us, and we did that very quickly. So that is it for us. So there's no Korea without true father. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. I want to see your response. Let us really respond to this very strongly. If you're not going to respond, I will be here for two hours. But if you respond, I'll quickly leave. He <laughs> said, I'm already going back. Can you see? So, <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, that is it there. That is about uh, the nation of Korea. You know, the Korea you see today is not just, you know, a divided nation. It's actually a whole country on its own. That is the original Korea. And that's where, that, that place you see where the, uh, the red 
Arrow is pointing is, the, is where our father was born, our true father was born in that location. That is the city, Jongju city, in the 1920s, you know. Wow, you see that? You know, the, the courtesy of these pictures of my brother, I will mention again, uh, who had been working also in, in, the, in, the, in the history part of our mission, uh, Mr. Uh, Julian Gray. He supported me with these pictures. So please enjoy it because he has actually done a lot of work trying to put all of these pictures together for me. That was John G. Market Day in the 1930s. And of course, also this is the Pyongan provincial capital in Shinoju, also in the 1930s. Oh, thank you. And this is the place uh, where our father was born. You know. You know, our father, for the moon, has a very long, long and eventful life. Many things happened in Korea in the time of our true father in the course of his life, such as the sudden rise of Christianity and the annexation of Korea by Japan. You know, I was going through history. I'm a lover of history. And I found out that actually this annexation and this love treaty that was actually signed three times. In 1905 was the first treaty that actually uh, Korea was forced to sign with Japan, making Korea a protectorate of Japan. Then in 1907, there was another treaty signed again, you know, such that, you know, the administration of, of, of Korea was allowed by only Japanese. And finally, also in 1910, there was this other one that was signed that totally made Japan to occupy the whole of Korea. All of this happened. So that's how the division of Korea took place. And of course, you know about how Korea became in, in half right now. Korea is divided North and South Korea. The Korean War, all of this all happened during the lifetime of our true father. It was really ongoing. You know, our true father was part of all of that. All of that also was when our true father had his public mission, his life history, all had an effect on our true father. And true father's life also had effect also in this world. True father's life had a very strong effect in the world history, in the world development. I can tell you today some of the things you see that you've actually had in divine principle, you've also read in history, could come about by the influence of our true father. Without true father's influence, all those things would never have happened. But of course also, some of these things also also have influence on True Father's life because Father also had to go through a lot of challenges, a lot of suffering with all these things happening. His father, in their, in their hometown in, uh, in North Korea, remember this time when True Father went to this place? That was 1991, right? Father was here with mother together. And this is also True Father's uh, junior sister. You, if you read the autobiography, Father talked about his junior sister, you know, there. And these are some of our members also who were there with the father. And one of the important influences on the father's life is the, is the, is the time uh, uh, when uh, Japan, like I said before, actually you know, occupied this nation of Korea. Uh, it is such a very, very uh, uh, important time. But uh, before I go to that, I would like to read to you very quickly again you know, the, some background from uh, the Chonsongyeon, very quickly. The general background you need to have. The country where God sent true father as, as a returning Lord suffered from natural disasters that caused famine throughout the land during the years just prior to his birth. Internationally as well, the entire world was in the midst of great chaos, manifesting signs of the last days. The world was about to divide into two camps. The reason for such chaos, both within the country of Korea and internationally, was the cause of the God's providence of, to establish national and international foundation of indemnity for restoration for the birth of the Lord at the second advent. True Father was born in Korea one year after the March 1st, Korea uh, 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 independence movement. Precisely on the sixth day of the first month of the lunar calendar, February 25 to be precise, 
you know, a solar calendar. In 1920, two father was born to this special, in this special village called Sangsa, in the Doksun uh, district of Jonju Township, North Pyongyang uh, province. His father was, his father's name is uh, Moon Gyeonggu, to whom true father later gave the title Chungbunim, meaning father of loyalty. His mother was Kim Gyeonggye, to whom true father also later gave the, the title Chungbunim, meaning mother of loyalty. True father was the second son among their six sons and seven daughters. So you can see father also came from how many children? 13. So you can understand why father also. Yeah, so now, true father's hometown. The Korean Peninsula is a providential land, as you all know, having the role of a bridge between the civilization of East and West. It is where preparations were made for the birth of the Lord of the Second Advent. According to true father, Jongju, father's birthplace, where, where God's love came to earth, was a place that God had predestined to be the starting point of a new future for humankind. Also, this name, Sangsari, this village of true fathers, but denotes a land uh, which people, which people yearn for and revere God. People revere God in that land. Uh, Sansari will become a holy ground for the people of the world. In the future, we all go there as a holy ground. And there were also a lot of things that happened at the time of True Father's birth. A lot of things happened. You know, auspicious signs appeared around the, the time of True Father's birth. In 1919, before the March 1st movement began, a golden bird flew in, uh, into, into the compound, into the compound of our True Father's house and sang a song. I wish I was here to hear the song of that bird. Because you know the Bible talks about the, the last days, the, the, there will be a, a trumpet sound, right? Announcing the birth of the Messiah. That bird was already doing that, right? And I tell you, there's more things that happened that we may not know about, but I can believe that, you know, uh, while our true father was here, our true father was able to reveal a lot about what happened before his, his birth. But this is very, very historical. And also, after a dream in which he saw a pair of dragons around ascend to heaven, his, grand, his grandfather, uh, Jong-Hul, uh, named true father, Jong myung Jong meaning dragon, and Myung meaning light. So however, immediately after Korea's liberation from Japan in 1945, as true father embarked upon the course of his public ministry for the province, Heaven gave him a new sense, a new name, a new mission. And that name was changed today as uh, Song Myung Moon, in accordance with the purpose of his providential mission. So I, I'd like to read more to you, you know, but if you, if you want, please try, do your best to read Champo Mogion. You'll know more about our true father's birth and more about the history of our true father. But anyhow, just a brief, to briefly give you uh, that uh, concept. Now we, we'll go on. With our slide, as you can see here, you know, Japan bullied Korea into giving up its sovereignty. It was not easy. Everything was taken, all the freedom was taken away, and everything was administered by the nation of Japan. This was, you know, not easy for the whole of Korea at that time. And a lot of people also still gave their best, you know, to, to this nation and such as this gentleman. But there's no much time to go into those uh, history now, but I will go quickly. And of course, the Korean people resisted that attempt of trying to really take over the nation. But as you know, this righteous army, these soldiers did their best to actually you know, protect their, their, their country. But it wasn't easy. It was such a very difficult uh, uh, time. During this time, they eradicated the Korean culture, forcing Koreans to speak Japanese, totally, uh, you know, assimilation policy, association policy, making sure that, you know, Korea can actually denounce its origin, its culture, and its language. In fact, when I also looked into history, a lot of people actually predicted that this was going to happen, that Korea will eventually kind of uh, disappear. But, as you know, this was a nation that was prepared by God to bring forth the Messiah. The people of Korea 
really resisted. And they did a lot. They worked very hard. They fought very hard to make sure they can actually get independence back. Such as how we have the March 1st, independence movement that came up, people really you know, demanding for freedom. And you know the story of this lady, you grandson. You remember this story? This lady, according to her father, her father said this woman's sacrifice actually gave a foundation for the Messiah to be born. You heard that, right? There in the autobiography. She refused. She stopped. She refused to, to, to be calmed. She refused to be, to be, to be silenced. She keeps shouting, man say, every time, man say, even in the prison, until she was killed, right? She couldn't give up saying, you know, uh, Korea, man say, and she was singing, you know, every time about Korean freedom, about Korea. And she, this lady was so powerfully strong, so righteous. And of course, another important influence in our father's uh, mission, in our father's life, was the rise of Christianity in Korea. Uh, Christianity actually did a lot of great things in Korea. You know, Christianity came to different parts of the world, but in Korea it was very special. It was done differently. In the case of Korea, a lot of people in my father's family also was, was uh, actually converted. Through father's family, but formerly they, conf they were Confucius. But uh, they had a very special experience whereby, you know, one of uh, true father's uh, younger her brother and sister was healed by the Christian missionaries, and that also really touched Father. That time, Father was actually just eight years old at that time when this happened. So this also really gave a lot of uh, uh, influence on Father, and Father began to develop his faith, and Father, as you know, had a very strong character, and he was determined to accomplish his mission. These are some of the Christian missionaries. These people came not just to teach, you know, not just to take any things away from Korea, but he came to serve. Unlike what was done in other countries, they came to South Korea. You know, I also remember those days that uh, Korea is known for one of these countries that have a very strong foundation of Christianity. More than any country you can imagine, in this world, Korea has a more stronger foundation of Christianity. Christians here are really, really tough Christians. I've seen, I've seen some of them, when they argue with you about the Bible, you know, you've got to be very strong. They are really tough. They are really good at what they're doing. Yeah. So Christianity uh, in Korea was really quite strong. This is a beautiful place. You, know, you heard about father's uh, experience of a father growing up in these beautiful looking places. True father spent time in nature. True father spent time to build himself from the very beginning. He wasn't just a messiah that was just sent, automatically had all the qualities. He had to build up himself. He had to really prepare himself for his future mission. Father said at the age of five, he knew what he has to do. He knew his mission, and he was ready for it. But of course, it was not so easy also at the time, you know, all of this was really happening. Father grew naturally concerned about the situation of the world. He was very much particular about the issue of injustice. He saw injustice happening all around him, and he was determined to fight that. You've heard a lot of stories, right, in the autobiography, about how Father would never give up until he actually makes his point. Even why he would never give up fighting someone who's actually even bigger and stronger than him. He wanted to continue fighting, doesn't give up. So determined every time. So in the, in the early 1900s, as, as I just mentioned to you, Christianity grew very strongly in Korea. And uh, compared to other countries like China or Japan, you know, Christianity in Korea was, was a phenomenon. So some of the churches that were really prepared were those that was used to support our true father. Some of those Christian churches that were prepared in the beginning. Although, you know, a lot of them were prepared to support true father, they came, but not all of them could follow him though. But anyhow, these are very important foundation for our true father's mission. <coughs> so true father desiring to live for a meaningful purpose even during his early uh, teenage years, he prayed for wisdom greater than that of Solomon, and faith greater than that of St. Paul, and love even greater than that of Jesus. This was his heart. Faith greater, I mean, sorry, wisdom greater than that of Solomon, faith greater than that of St. Paul, and even love greater than that of Jesus Christ. Two father, two father prayed like this very strongly. I think based on that kind of prayer, strong determination that he had, he was also, uh, Jesus Christ appeared to him. He had an encounter with Jesus Christ at the age of 15. He met Jesus Christ. Jesus called him at this age and spoke to him. That time, Jesus, uh, Father was 15 years and four months exactly. It was not easy for Father. Father actually uh, reluctantly accepted. In the beginning, we had Father said no. But again, Father did tell us, well, if you read the autobiography, that 
You know, the look in the face of Jesus Christ could not make him to deny, to refuse anymore because he could see a lot of pain and suffering in the heart of Jesus and he was determined to carry on that cross and to accomplish it. And through Father did his best through this. So Father was determined not only just to take up the mission, but also was determined to comfort the heart of God. And he was determined to also develop more love, like I said before, more than the love on the heart of Jesus Christ. So the Messiah, as a human being, of course, still can feel pain. The Messiah, as a human being, also has to overcome a lot of evil, has to go through a lot of suffering. And of course, it is also like his mission. He has already accepted that. He knew that if I go this course, I'm going to go through a lot of suffering. I'm going to go through a lot of pain, but I'm determined to do so. I'm not going to seek for help from anyone, but I will do it very graciously and very, very, uh, with a lot, with a lot of uh, gratitude. True Father did that in many ways. And of course, as you all know, True Father went through lots and lots of difficulty in his mission. In the beginning of his mission, True Father, you know, uh, began uh, in all these places you can see. True Father came to Seoul, he was aware of his calling, but still he knew he had a lot of things to learn, so he began to mix up with different churches. He, went, he stayed in these places. Uh, some of the corners here, I was told, is where True Father actually lived, over there. True Father stayed in that room there, in Seoul. He was uh, actually attending a Sunday school uh, in one of the churches here. Uh, the name of this church, one of the, is a, is a, it's called Jesus Church or something like that. Uh, he attended a Sunday school there many times. Father was teaching in Sunday school, mixed up with the church, trying to learn many things, trying to prepare for his mission. You can see Father there, True Father there with some of his friends, you know, at those early, early days. And True Father here, in that one in the circle there, in the Jesus Church in uh, Uksokdong. And uh, here is a, is a pastor of that church, uh, Yi Yondu, Mr. Lee Moksanim. He was the one in charge of that church. And this was also a very important time. This was a time when Japan was still getting more stronger and stronger, having its grip on Korea. And during this time also, the World War also have already started, you know, in Europe in 1939. Some of the, some of the people with father in these churches. And of course, father also went to this school, uh, went to the technical college, affiliated with the Waseda University in Tokyo. He had to go there to study from uh, this time in uh, 1941 to 1943, father went to study in Tokyo. Father went to this place to study what? Who can remember? Electricity. Electrical what? Yeah. Why did father have to study electrical engineering? Do you know why he had to do that? Why? Who can guess why father had to study electrical engineering? What? Victor? <laughs> why did father have to study electrical engineering? What? Positivity. Positivity and negativity. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. is that, like, uh, if you do the big things, you have to do the calculate very fast. Number two, the father said uh, the electricity is correct to the, the spiritual world. It's invisible. Yeah. yeah. Number three, the every movement of the physical world is correct to the electricity. That is three things. Thank you very much. You hear that also. You see, I'm also learning something today. Put your hands together. Yeah. You know, that's really great. Just in all of this, I had felt that when I look at the world today, I could understand very deeply why True Father studied electrical engineering. Because True Father can actually see the future very clearly. He knew what is going to happen in the future. And he knew very clearly that the future of this world is the future of electrical engineering, is the future of uh, information technology is the future of uh, communication engineering, all of that. All of that, my brother said over there, is connected to the spiritual world. In fact, there was a time one brother in Japan developed a kind of uh, equipment that could hear the sound and reflect you know, sound in the spiritual world. And I believe very quickly something needs to be done about this. We are going to be able to also have access to information technology that can enable us to connect to the spiritual world. But what I'm hoping is that the first generation, second generation, third generation need to do something about it. Need to get into the world of electrical engineering, need to get into the world of communication technology to actually let the reason why father studied electrical engineering in the university to come into being. Because we are the ones to make the future change. Otherwise, the future will change us. 
Is that also? Your, your equipment these days can have things coming to you, telling you what to do, what to change. No, it shouldn't be like that. Father is hoping that we should be able to change the world by going to that world of computer technology and really change everything. So Father began by showing us the way, and he knew the future. And you can understand, Father is really the person of the future. That was Father there in those uh, early age you know, of his time. And uh, this is another picture of Father now. Oh, yeah. OK, now, if, if you, I want you to look. Someone made, an, someone made a, a comment about it, and I think it's true. If you look at Father's face now, and the one that you first saw in the beginning of this slide, is there some difference? Who can, what is the difference you can see? Huh? <laughs> you said, yeah, Father has more. <laughs> father has more beard over. <laughs> what, what can you see in Father's face here? What can you see? Huh? What did you say? Someone said something just now. He looked what? He looked very serious. He looked very serious. You know, this is a time when it is so more than clear to Father what is his, his face has become more serious and actually looked more tougher than the beginning. It's becoming tough. And Father is expecting that, you know, at this time, a lot of things are going to happen. And he's determined, ready to face that. So I, I want us to look at that and really have a very deep meaning to that. And of course, also our mother was also born at this time, also in 1943. But I'm sure you'll be, you'll be hearing about two mothers' calls next week, right? So then that will be focus more on mothers' calls. But this is about true father. So our mother was born at this time. But there's no way you're going to talk about true father without mentioning true mother, right? It's, 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 it's because they are true parents of heaven and earth and humankind. So, so they are tied together. They are connected together. So true mother was born in 1943. Also, the same way, on the, first, on the sixth day of the first month, of January, uh, uh, 1943, lunar calendar, February 10th, pre precisely, in, the, in this country, South Pyongyang province. It looks so beautiful. And this, was, this also uh, was, a, was a true father with some, actually this is a very story that true father actually came to meet his uh, former landlords, I think in Seoul or somewhere, and actually tried to, in Japan, he's in Japan, oh, thank you. Thank you, my brother. He was in Japan, and True Father went there to really meet them and to show gratitude to them uh, to, for taking care of him when he was actually living in their house. So Father is a person like that. Mm. He, never, he never forgets what people, good things people did to him. And of course, even if he remembers what evil things people did to him, but he still loved them all the same. So during this time also, uh, True Father, you know, uh, was very much involved in history. True Father also got involved in a lot of things in the, in the history. He got also involved in the resistance on the ground movement, you know, at this time. Father was part of that. In December of that year, Japan also attacked the, the Pearl Harbor in, in, in Hawaii. And World War II now expanded to this part of the world, you know. And many of the Korean people also were conscripted to go into the military, to go into the army to serve. And you, as you also had, True Father also should have gone into the army, but True Father actually did not go into the army to serve for the sake of his mission. He, he couldn't do that. So in September of 1943, True Father returned to Korea. He quickly finished his, his course in Waseda University. He graduated more earlier than planned. And, uh, he, he, and you know, this was, I know you, you remember this story of father had to take this same ship back, right? But father said at that particular moment, his feet refused to move. Something happened. Father couldn't move. Father is always guided by heaven. And uh, actually, uh, father's mother thought, Chumonim thought father was on this, uh, on, on this uh, ship, but actually father wasn't there. But father could, did not move. Father, for some special reason, you know, did not uh, uh, join this uh, ship. And so father's life was saved because this ship was bombed, actually. And when it was bombed, as you all heard, True mother's, uh, uh, true father's uh, mother was so worried that she didn't realize she had no shoes on her and was running looking for, looking for a son, you know, that, you know, she had a nail of about almost one or two feet went into, you know, his feet without knowing anything. And afterwards, she re realized that because of her love for her son, not just her love for her son, her love for the Messiah, you know, someone who is to save this whole world, you know.
So Japan is still determined, you know, to, to make, you know, Korea, you know, submit strongly. In fact, this time people were forced to also uh, worship at the Shinto, Shinto tribe. You, you know the Shinto region of Japan? You know, you go like, you kind of uh, worshiping some god. I tried to ask my wife, what does that Shinto uh, worship means? And she reminded me that uh, when I was in Japan, I did went to one of the, uh, one of the temple and actually prayed there. Okay, now I have a memo. I think I'm already one hour. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, this is what I was warned about, and I hope I'm going to be able to succeed. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. I think we can do it. Let's keep moving. Are you with me? Yes. Are you here? Yes. Or you are sleeping? No. Please don't sleep. Yeah. If you, like I promise you, if you sleep, we're going to go until 6 p.m. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, Japan was determined. They still went on, you know, making sure that, you know, our Korea... But uh, Korea also is also determined to make sure that uh, uh, they don't give up. They don't. They don't give up. You know. Of course, those who resisted the Japanese, you know, uh, 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 occupation and their uh, determination was arrested, questioned, and tortured. Even including father, the true father was also arrested and tortured many times because father was suspe suspected of being a communist. But at that time, when father was arrested. Father was tortured to give out name, but Father refused. Father did know everyone who was involved in the whole matter, but Father refused to actually uh, give any name. I will sometimes skip some slide. So in the, uh, this is the Liberation of Korea in 1945. At the end of the World War II, First in the Pacific, after the use of atomic bomb, for the moon said, uh, my arms would not go up in, in, in Mansei. It was the beginning of his mission. And it seemed, it seemed to him that this country would now face very difficult time. So they came, but, none, but not through their own doing. You know, the, the, everything happened. And then, of course, there was a division of North and South Korea. A lot of suffering was taking place. People were dying of hunger, of difficulty. Many things were happening in, in this nation. And this is actually what you can see today. At this time also, the, 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 the country had divided, as you can see. And uh, this uh, man, Kim Il-sung, newly formed uh, the North Korea in 1945, 1945 October. He became the leader of North Korea. He was trained in Russia and in China. Very young, strong communist. But his communism was even more than the communism of the communists himself. And of course, you know this man also, his son also now, his grandson actually. You know, in a way actually, it seems as if at the time when, you know, somehow the, the, the the issue of the Japanese occupation was kind of ending. The treaty was, I mean, there was a lot of uh, movement and, the, and Korea kind of fought for the independence. It may, that may look like it was good, right? But the terrible thing about that also is that after that happened, this division took place. And this situation happened in, in, our, in our true parents' uh, hometown. This now became really another battle again, another battle about a nation, the nation in the southern part of here affirming God and the nation in the northern part denying God's existence. This is the kind of division that we saw. Of course, this has also a providential meaning. But all the same, uh, this is really uh, not intended, but it was actually a consequence that happened. But at this time also, uh, many things were going, going on. A lot of people were, were being uh, very upset to the Japanese people, and many times the Japanese were actually attacked. Because now after the, after the war was, uh, the, the, the Japanese occupation was over, the Japanese now are trying to leave. They are forced to go back to their country, and the Koreans were actually bent on attacking them. But True Father came to their aid, and True Father said, no, do not attack them. True Father many times protected the Japanese people, and he made them to escape, he allowed them to escape you know, very uh, sincerely. True Father gave love to them, though he knows that they had actually tortured him, that persecuted him.
Now, during this time, as you all know, True Father also himself was called to go to North Korea. At the time when a lot of people were actually escaping from the, from the North, coming to the South, Heavenly Parents told True Father, go to this, go to the, to go to this North Korea. There are people who were prepared, like this person, Kim Song Do. Uh, uh, he believed that the Messiah would come to, the, to Korea very strongly. And also, some of uh, True Father's uh, followers also have also joined Father in, uh, in uh, Pyongyang. And Father started some evangelical mission in this, uh, in this city, you know, with some uh, Christian tra traditional churches. But then again, as you know, this wasn't easy. There was a lot of persecution, you know, by the churches, you know, on Father. Father was persecuted very strongly. They, they accused him of, uh, of many things because he, the Christians there also uh, were kind of threatened. And for this, Father was accused and Father was in prison in the communist uh, concentration camp in uh, North Korea. Father was sentenced to five years imprisonment. This was the time when Kim Il-sung was in power in that nation. Uh, because this was due to the failure of Christianity, the Christians there persecuted Father so strongly. And this really made it so uh, difficult. But anyhow, uh, Father had to go into Hunnam. This was not easy at all. Father was accused of disturbing the society, influencing people. You know, uh, you know, um, you know, also Father also did many things actually mm -hmm. that time also to help a lot of people. But of course, all of this now was lost because of the, of the uh, persecution by the, by the Christian community. So in this case, the Christian foundation was lost because of this. So Father had to go to Hunnam prison. And this was not good at all. You also know, you read in the book how True Father suffered a lot in, in the Hunnam prison. Father went through a lot of difficulty. So True Father had to begin again. He had to start all over again. But True Father's attitude was very, very different. True Father felt that he had to believe. He had to be determined that he can do it. He could see very clearly this is like a mission impossible. True Father knew the possibility that he could die in that prison camp. But he was determined. He told God, please God, do not think about me. Do not worry about me. I'm going to do my best to overcome. I will, I will fulfill it. Do not worry about me. Do not think about me. I'm going to do everything to succeed. So True Father tried to comfort the heart of God. In, during this prison time, True Father overcame himself, gave away his food, as you all had. Many times, True Father gave his food away. For almost three weeks, he wasn't eating. So Father felt that he had to have as much food like anyone. He felt like even if he has this much, he wanted to share to other people. He was having this kind of heart to even take care of other people. And you know what happened in that prison camp. Father had a lot of uh, disciples, a lot of people followed him without saying a word, just by Father's lifestyle. So this is actually a lesson for us here to learn how to dominate ourselves in times of hunger, in times of difficulty, in times of challenges. True Father did that. It's a lesson for us. True Father took dominion over his environment, took dominion over himself, and really controlled his body, mind and body unity, very strongly. Father was able to overcome that circumstances in that North Korean camp. If Father didn't do that, we will not be here today. Father had to really succeed. He had to overcome because he knew the future. He knew without him, there would be no future of the world. So Father was determined. Father even looked for the most difficult task during that time, pushed himself to be in the most difficult place. You know, he decided to go to where people are working and work more than other people. And only God knows what was going in the mind of Father. Probably he felt by carrying every sack of those heavy objects, it's like, uh, you know, lifting humanity, you know, to, to salvation. So Father was so determined. So the Father, despite he did not dwell in resentment, felt great compassion for other people. He think about other people suffering more than himself, and he, and he really uh, did not accuse anyone, but he was grateful for everything that he did that happened to him. So one of the lessons we can learn from here, very sincerely, you know, look at Father here, you know, in Hunnam, nitrogen fertilizer complex. Father knew 
He had to overcome every challenge in order to continue his mission. The lesson we need to learn is this, eh? do not, don't, uh, what we can learn here is that do not apply for a job or a mission without considering the demand of that job. Yes, it's a lesson, very seriously. Father, father knew this very clearly, and father went for it. And number two, you know, number two is that you know we can survive. You can survive in this life by looking for other people's situation, by thinking of other people. Even when it seems suicidal, sometimes to live for the sake of other people, to love them, even at the, at, the, at the risk of your own life, at the risk of your life, loving them. And thirdly, Father himself, how to survive, how to survive to continue his mission. But that's one thing he did. He tried as much as he can to make sure that he does not resist the suffering. He could face the suffering and he was determined to survive, you know, absolutely. How are we doing? Are we doing fine? Yes. Okay. This is a condition, don't forget. Number four, also, please, uh, okay, maybe I can just jump this. Uh, Now, of course, during this time, Father was still in the, in the, in the prison uh, camp. He was serving this jail time of five years. And uh, a lot of things was actually taking place. But uh, something did happen at that time. I'm sure you, you heard about this story. The Korean War began with North Korea's invasion of the South just after 4 a.m. on June 25, 1950. So as soon as North Korea invaded the southern part, the world knew about that. And the uh, United Nations you know, began to make a plan. And father was in this prison camp at this time. And a lot of people were being executed. When they, when they knew about this, you know, uh, that there would be some problem there, the United Nations was coming. They had, it, they had the information already about the United Nations coming. So they began to make plans to execute all our prisoners. And as you remember, father also could have been executed during that time. But by the grace of God, in 1950, you know, uh, true father, could escape, you know, based on this United Nations Security Council. You know, we, we are told that actually there was one particular person that wasn't there. I think it was from the nation of Russia, right? This man, if he had been there in that meeting, he would have actually voted against. And that would have mean that the United Nations cannot invade North Korea. But for some reason that day, the man was absent. Maybe he slept over. Maybe he was called upon somewhere, somehow. Heaven took charge of that. Heaven was, heaven was there to protect our true father. You know, he couldn't be there. And for that, the vote was taken that the United Nations can now invade. So the United Nations did. And uh, I'm sure you've heard about this man, uh, Douglas MacArthur, how he landed in Incheon, right? But I also read some books about this man that he, he actually, before he actually bombed that very prison site of where true father was, he actually prayed. He prayed that moment. And he, he, we were told that he got some kind of inspiration to actually bomb that location. That must have come from God, right? God, this is how True Father was uh, protected. That was uh, 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 Douglas MacArthur, you know, there himself. So this was how Father could escape from, uh, from Hunan prison. There are many stories about this, but we cannot go into all those stories. But I will just quickly go through some of the uh, points I want us to consider here very quickly so that we can, we can I'll just quickly brush through so, so save time. Just look at, let's look at the slide, we read the slide together, right? That was in, in, uh, in September 15, 1950, 1950 MacArthur, uh, MacArthur uh, land in Incheon, the West Coast. We were told also how that was very difficult to do, but somehow he did it. 
So doing this, for this reason, this cost of supplies and reinforcement, and then for the, uh, for, for, the, for the North Korean troops, so the United Nations forces pushed the North Korean forces back to the peninsula. At least in that case, the left where they were. You can see the efforts of the Makata's group there. The Korean War was a bloody and difficult one. Very terrible. You can imagine. People were suffering and flying, you know, fleeing for safety. It was so devastating. And as you can see, when there's a war, when war breaks out, those who suffer are uh, civilians, women, children. You can see also this kind of sight. It was a very terrible sight. And this is actually the, the, the refugee trail, the, 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 the path that our true father walked all through. And as some of you here, I mean, the GOP also one time, we did went on a special pilgrimage to actually also walk true father's path. So this is it, but it's easy now to walk through, you know, but that time it was very difficult, very, very difficult. People walking on snow. You can imagine if you spend even 10 minutes in this kind of situation, but people were spending hours and days walking back like this. Oh, it was very, very devastating. You know, because you know, it was so difficult for, for, uh, uh, for, 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 for Korea at this time, especially the southern part of Korea, because of the way North Koreans were actually attacking. They were not attacking in the way you can actually recognize and see a soldier. It's what they call the terrorism way of attacking. It's a kind of a guerrilla warfare. People come mixed among people, you know, as if they are part of the society, but they are gradually infiltrating the setup and then creating you know, all kinds of uh, trouble. But True Father had to go through all of this, and True Father was in all of this all this time. So Father moved to Pusan, as you all know. Father walked to Pusan, and here we remember how our church began. We have also been there. Please, you must go to Pusan and see this. In fact, recently, True Mother has instructed a new uh, building in Pusan, a new church center there, and True Mother is mobilizing members in Pusan to work hard to keep that foundation and to make Pusan also be bubbling, you know, in terms of our mission. So uh, if you have time, please, you know, visit Pusan and then see all of this. And actually, I was able to see the location of that, of that new uh, church uh, headquarters. It is very close to the, to the harbor there, in, uh, in, uh, to the port in Pusan. There was a lot of problem this time. There was food shortage. Father couldn't afford to eat. People around him, you know, these are his early uh, people here. I think, uh, I think one pick him also was here. I mean, some uh, American soldiers. Some other time you get more stories about this, but not today. We have to finish up quickly. And this is actually where also True Father wrote the original development principle, Wally One Bone, the very, very first write up that today we can call it the original divine principle, but written in Pusan. And True Father now moved here, and these are the early members of True Father in Daegu, 1954, and the official registration of our church took place on May 1st, 1954. Uh, and there's True Father now smiling as if nothing happened, but actually went through a lot, you know. Then, of course, you remember the Chompadon church that came up after that. Then we had our church headquarters here in Chompadon. And afterwards, also uh, we have our true friends, holy wedding. That's how we were born. We were born through this way, right? Yeah. We were born through this. This, this gave back to us. So this is the beginning. So from here, we can see that hope actually be began in our church. Our church was established. And the first Holy Blessing ceremony took place. And our church now expanded all over Korea. Not only that, our church also expanded to all over parts of the world. America, Japan. You read in the book, in the autobiography, of how even the first missionaries were sent to Japan. How Father determined to send them. How they also were determined to go. They don't want to come back. You remember the study of the, of the, of the missionary who went to Japan? Who didn't have any place to stay? Who refused to be kicked out? Who escaped when he was actually caught by the Japanese people? He escaped again and then continued to witness in Japan. All of these stories you had. Not only that, many missionaries were sent to Africa, other parts of Europe, America, and they also went through a lot of difficulties, but they were determined. So our church 
It was all over the place. Aha. Uh -huh. Now here we can talk about this, right? So I decided to cut down all the various slides because of time, as you can see. But I would like us to focus on just a few things about our true father, the qualities of our true father. What do we need to observe about true father? You know, what is the value, the value of our true father? Why is true father so valuable to, to us? Why is true father so important to our life? What are the qualities of our true father? One of them is that our true father knows the heart of God. Is that so? True father knows the heart of God. And true father is determined to comfort the heart of God. More than anybody on this, in this world, our father knows that that's one very quality that we cannot, we cannot imagine. It's the value of our father. And also, our father has the ability to control his body. He has a mind and body unity very strongly. True father is able to know how to do this. He's able to know how to overcome himself. He's able to, just like you saw what he did when he was in the Hunnam prison, when you read all in details, father was determined to stay alive. Father was determined to keep his life in check for the sake of the world. That only can come about by man and body unity. And also, Father had all the other quality, like he has the ability to forgive people. Right? Father has the ability to forgive people, such as this. Oh, sorry, I think I, I missed out the slide. Just a moment. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh OK, anyway, I, I missed out the slide, but that's OK. That saves our time. Such as when he actually visited, uh, when, when he visited uh, 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 Kim Il-sung in North Korea. That was 1991. I remember that day. You know, I was here in Korea, you know, distributing the Sege Ibo newspaper. And then, you know, I, had, I, I just saw, I just saw, you know, in the paper, the true father was in North Korea. I was very surprised. I mean, we've heard that father was going to go there many times, but we didn't know it was going to be so quick like that. Everyone was surprised. But I remember the day before that time, there were some people that came to our factory where we were, you know, making suits, Christian Bennett, and they were trying some suits on. These were actually True Father's bodyguard. I came to know the following day. They were actually preparing to go with True Father to North Korea. But when they got to Beijing, they couldn't go. They were sent back. True Father had to go to the True Mother and some few people, right? And can you, can you imagine how that is for Father? Father is going back now to where? To the very country, to the very place where he was put in prison. To the very person who put him in prison. And True Father was going there. But what did True Father did? True Father still went there because of the heart of forgiveness. True Father was able to forgive people who have even tried to kill him. That is Father's heart, very, very strongly. Father really did this. And uh, that's one of the things I would like us to quickly see why Father could do this. If you, if you read with me very quickly. Those are the slides I was missing, I think. So it's a slide about the crown of glory. Father said, when I doubt people, I feel pain. When I judge people, it is unbearable. When I hate people, there is no value to my existence. Yet, if I believe, I am deceived. And if I love, I am betrayed. Suffering and grieving tonight, my head in my hands, am I wrong? Yes, I am wrong. Even though we have deceived, still believe. Though we are betrayed, still forgive. Love completely. Even those who hate you. Wipe your tears away and welcome with, with, a, with, with a smile those who knew nothing but deceit and those who betray without regret. Oh, Master, the pain of loving. Look at my hands. Please place your head on my chest, your hand on my chest. My heart is busting such agony. But when I love those who acted against me, I brought victory. If you have done the same thing, I will give you the crown of glory. This is True Father's poem he wrote when he was just at the age of 16, right? Remember? So Father wrote this poem at that early age, and that is exactly what could sustain Father all through. And True Father is also challenging us to also do this, to also be able to receive this crown of glory. <clears throat> and finally, finally, more the quality of True Father is that True Father has the ability to remove original sin. Now. This is why he's a messiah. He's a messiah because he can forgive original sin, he can remove original sin. He knows the solution to this. He found the solution. He discovered the solution to remove the original sin. This is what made him the messiah. And it's one of the most important qualities. In fact, today, 
we are having this special workshop. We are having special grace because of that ability of Father to be able to give us salvation, remove our original sin, and then even give many more conditions for us and many more opportunities for us to be forgiven. We got the grace today because of this ability to remove sin, to forgive. Yeah. So basically, I want to end here uh, right on time. Thank you very much, everyone. And God bless you.